It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Boxdraw. Mr. Frank Warren, we haven't got a lot of time, so we'll fly through this. Mag this magnificent seven card, which fight do you think would may stand out as a fight of the night? Do you know what? It's a tough one. I like uh, I like the main event because there's a lot of uh, lot of, of, at, at stake there. You know, Nathan's looking to wants a big fight at Stoke City's ground in the summer, and we can only do that during the close season. So he's got to win the fight or he don't get it. And his opponent really, really does fancy it. I can see it in his eyes. He fancies that fight. Um, you've got the, the I, don't, I don't know whether you call it a Liverpool bust up or not, but you've got the fight between Dennis and Brad. That is competitive. I mean, there's no love lost there at the moment. I hope they're going to be pals afterwards, but that could be a, an outstanding fight. You've got Liam Davis in against the Mexican, who's been on these shores before, done a job on Lee, Lee McGregor. Liam's done everything that's asked for him. 15 fights, he's won them all. He's a British Commonwealth European champion, done it the hard way. This is for the IBO title, and he fancies the job. It's a tough, tough fight, but that could be a standout. And then you've got Joe Joyce, whose career's on the line. He can't afford three losses. He's got to win this fight to resurrect himself. And obviously, and I can keep going on about all the fights. Every fight's a good fight. All, there's undefeated guys fighting undefeated guys some really good domestic bust-ups, some good international fights. It is a absolute boxing fans dream. Absolute dream. It definitely is. And, you know, you touched on the heavyweights there, and I've seen news recently that you've, you know, also secured the signature of Joseph Parker. Um, it feels like you've got a big stronghold on the heavyweight division. You know, you've got a lot of the young guys coming through. You've got the guys at the top as well. Uh, why have all the other promoters been sleeping and you've been just picking up all the heavyweights? Well, no, yeah, but we did just pick them up. I mean, we've, we've developed and worked with heavyweights. I mean, we bought Joe Joyce's contract from his former promoter because we, we felt we could do something with him. Daniel Dubois, we invested in from day one. Tyson, um, you know, all these guys have done well and, and others have joined us. Young Moses Atuma, he's Atuma. He's, I mean, he's considered by a lot of people as the future of heavyweight division. He's a fabulous, fabulous prospect. Um, Joe Parker, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Will you look, look to be speaking to Dillian White because he appears to be a free agent and he's fighting this weekend? Well, uh, I don't know what the position is with the British Boxing Board controlling his license, so I have no idea. And let's see what happens the weekend. Uh, and then also we saw uh, Eddie Hearn come out recently and he said that AJ is now the best heavyweight on the planet. Um, and obviously a lot of this is because of the comparisons made with Tyson's performance against Ngannou. Do you want to get your viewpoint on that? Well... He would say that, and I'll get him, and it was a good win that he had. But, you know, Tyson's fighting the guy who, who beat him twice and took his title off him in, in Usyk on May the 18th in the biggest fight this century. And the winner of that fight will be the best heavyweight on the planet until somebody dethrones him. A lot of people spoke to Tyson last week, and he refuses to make any excuses for that Ngannou fight. He says everything was perfect when, on observation, it looked like it wasn't. But He's not a crybaby. Got on with it. He won a fight. He had an off night. He got clips on the top of the head, showed showed what he's all about, his, his heart got up, got back into the fight and won the fight on a, it was an off night. And I know there are things that were said, but you know, it's irrelevant, it doesn't mean anything. All that matters is what you do in the ring. And at the end of the day, Tyson's done everything that's been asked him in, in fights, because he's undefeated. Does AJ beat Usyk in the third fight? I, 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 I'm not going to gauge, I mean, I'm not going to gauge, you know, what whether he beat him on the strength of of, of the Nagano fight. I mean, Nagano, Nagano, I thought would give anybody a tough fight. And I said, a, you know, tough fight after the after Tyson's fight on that performance he put in that ring. You know, I said when I was asked before the fight what I felt would happen. And I said that the first one who lands the, the most significant punch will win the fight. And that's how it turned out. And he didn't learn it, lean, uh, land it once. He learned it, landed it three times in two rounds. And done a job, and he's done a brilliant job, and that's that, that's fantastic. Would he beat Would he beat Usyk again? I don't know. He, he didn't. He had two two opportunities and didn't do it. Maybe he will now. But first of all, I won't be, well, first of all, Usyk has got to beat Tyson for him to fight him for the belts, and I don't think he's going to do that. 
And let me ask the question, if Tyson stops Usyk, which AJ couldn't do, what are we going to be sit talking about then? It's a fair point. Last question I've got for you. I spoke to Eddie Hearn recently and I asked him about, you know, his drive from going country to country, being at every press conference, and he described it as an addiction, the boxing game. You've been doing this for years, decades, um, and you're here today for this press conference. You probably didn't need to be, but you're here, you're turning up every every week. You was in Riyadh last week. What, what what drives Frank Warren? What is it about you that's making you turn up to all these press conferences and still be involved in sport? Because I love it. I'm 72 years of age and I love it. I enjoy what I'm doing. It, it, you know, I love working, you know, help developing fighters' careers. You know, they start off with us, bringing them through the ranks and developing them, getting them into a stage where they can you know, achieve their dreams, make some money, uh, hopefully set them, them and their families up for life. It's, it's a great, great thing, great sport to be involved with. And at its best, there's no sport like it. No sport like it. What satisfaction do you get out when you see fighters make money from, you pick them up from scratch and then they make it towards the end? It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I like to see them make money. I like to make money. I like to see them, as I've just said, make money. And it's a uh, it's a really satisfying thing. And to remain friends with them afterwards and share. And when you meet with them, you know, you share that moment. Do you remember that fight? Yeah, wasn't that great? You know, and it's just a great, great memories to have. It's just, you know, there's, there's nothing like boxing. We've got a lot of people snipe it on the outside, all, all voicing their opinions. But, they, but putting it the most crudest way, most of them know fuck all about boxing and wouldn't even go and put their, you know, what we do is, well, I know I've done it, where you've got to go and mortgage your house to put the money on. Would they have the balls to do things like that? No, but they got plenty of that. I love that passion, Frank. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Cheers, mate. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals. 